there fellow UK small business owners and aspiring entrepreneurs, welcome to the Simplex Accounting Channel. I'm Lucy Johnson, a qualified and licensed accountant specialising in small businesses. If you need help with your business's bookkeeping and accounting, you can book a free consultation call with me today. In today's video, we're diving into the world of limited companies to help you understand the most tax efficient ways to pay yourself like a pro. If you're a sole trader, don't worry. You can check out our other video, Paying Yourself as a Sole Trader. But for now, let's dive in. <laughs> Limited companies versus sole traders. A sole trader is a business owned and operated by one individual. The company and the owner are considered the same legal entity. Hence, the owner is personally responsible for all aspects of the business, including its debts and liabilities. A limited company, on the other hand, is a separate legal entity owned by the shareholders. The company's finances are separate from the personal finances of the shareholders. Limited liability means that shareholders are generally not personally liable for the company's debts beyond their investment into the company. To learn more about which structure would suit your business better, check out our video, Sole Trader or Limited Company, how to decide. Payment options. As a limited company owner, there's several ways to pay yourself, each with their pros and cons. We'll cover the most common methods, so salary, dividends, director's loan, and reimbursement of expenses. So first up is salary. How much should you pay yourself? Well, it depends on your circumstances, is the honest answer, and your financial goals as well. Ultimately, the choice is yours, but there's a few things that you want to consider to be able to keep your business afloat and to keep it growing. Company profits. Consider the financial health of your company. Your salary should be sustainable based on the company's profits. A more conservative approach may be wise if the business is still growing or experiencing fluctuations. Personal financial goals. Assess your personal financial goals and your needs. Your salary should strike a balance between covering your living expenses and leaving enough profit in the company for reinvestment or for your future needs. For more help with setting goals, check out our video, Financial Planning for Small Business Success, Setting Goals and Budgeting. Industry standards. Research industry standards for salaries in your sector. Understanding what others in your field earn can provide you with a benchmark for your own compensation. Market conditions. Take into account the economic conditions and market trends. If your industry is thriving, you might be more flexible to increase your salary. Legal requirements. Ensure that your salary complies with legal requirements and minimum wage regulations. It's essential to stay within the bounds of employment law. Pros and cons. Stability. A fixed salary provides stability and a regular income, making it easier to budget for personal finances. Pension contributions. Salary allows you to contribute into a personal pension, helping you build a retirement fund. Reduced tax complexity. Income tax and national insurance contributions are straightforward when receiving a salary. Now let's go on to some cons. Tax implications. Salaries are subject to both income tax and employee national insurance, which might result in higher overall tax payments. Administrative overhead. Processing payroll and dealing with PAYE, pay as you earn, can be an administrative burden. Income tax. Income tax is a tax you pay based on your income. You do not have to pay taxes on all types of income, but you do have to pay on your salary if it's over the personal allowance. Income tax is charged based on different bands and thresholds. See the latest tax tables below to help you with these. For example, as of 2023 to 24 tax year, if you had a £32,000 salary, you would not pay tax on the first 12570 On the remaining 19430 you would pay 20% tax, which is £3,886 in total. National insurance contributions. Class one national insurance comprises employee, so primary, and employer, which is secondary, contributions. Employees pay primary contributions on earnings above a specified threshold if they are below the state pension age. 
Company directors pay contributions on an annual income basis. Employers pay secondary contributions on employees' wages and directors' salaries above a certain threshold. Employers' national insurance is tax deductible, reducing corporation tax for the business. Despite being an additional cost, making these payments can benefit both the owner and the business. For example, as of 2023 to 2024 tax year with the £32,000 salary, you would pay no tax on the first £12,570 and 12% on the next £19,430, giving you a total of £2,331.60. 0% on salary earnings up to £12,570, 12% 12 on salary earnings 12,570 to 50,270 per year and 2% on salary earnings above 50,270 pounds per year. So to avoid paying full national insurance while still qualifying for contributions, a monthly salary of 1,047 pound 50 pence would cover the primary threshold for income tax However, if you want to pay £758, this would cover the lower earnings limit. By choosing this amount, you just meet the lower earnings limit instead of going below it. This way, you accumulate qualifying years for national insurance without paying the full amount. This is crucial for new directors who might not build qualifying years as quickly as they would on a regular payroll. Keeping a low salary ensures you meet the lower earnings limit helping you to avoid national insurance payments while still building up qualifying years for your state pension. Having fewer than 30 qualifying years may result in a reduced basic state pension, but you can consider topping up through voluntarily giving some national insurance contributions. However, if you have two or more directors or an employee, you can qualify for what's called employment allowance. Now, employment allowance covers up to £5,000 of employer's national insurance payments, meaning that you can pay yourselves up to £1,047.50 without paying for national insurance until you've used up that £5,000 allowance. Once it's gone, it's gone. PAYE refers to the pay as you earn income system. Under PAYE, employers are responsible for deducting income tax and national insurance contributions from their employees' wages or salaries before they pay them. PAYE also applies to other employee payments, including bonuses, commissions, and also benefits in kind. The amount deducted is then sent to HMRC or His Majesty's Revenue and Customs is the UK Tax Authority. Employers are required to operate PAYE on behalf of their employees and the system ensures that individuals meet their income tax obligations throughout the tax year. The employer calculates the amount of tax to be deducted based on the employee's tax code, which considers various factors such as personal allowances, tax reliefs and other relevant considerations. Xero is a fully making tax digital compliant accounting software to help you run your business by sending invoices, creating expense claims, viewing reports and helping you get paid quicker. It has a large variety of apps that you can choose from in the app store so any apps that you currently use can integrate seamlessly through Xero's app store. Hubdoc is used for any manual data entry so these can include any kind of receipt and invoices as attachments on your transactions in Xero. You can also have fixed assets and inventory directly through Xero. Xero's main dashboard is really user friendly. So it has your bank account, cash in and cash out, accounts to watch, bills that you need to pay and invoices that need to be paid to you. Thanks Xero, back to the video. Next up, dividend payments. Dividends are payments made to company shareholders from its profits. As a limited company director, you can receive dividends to extract the profits from the business. Dividends can be paid from current or retained profits from previous financial years. So what are the pros and cons of dividends? The pros. Tax efficiency. Dividends are subject to lower tax rates than salary, potentially resulting in lower overall tax liability. Flexibility. You can choose when and how much to pay in dividends, allowing for tax planning. No national insurance contributions. Dividends are not subject to national insurance contributions, which can lead to significant savings. The cons. 
is dependent on profits. You can only pay dividends from profits. So if the company isn't profitable, dividend payments might not be sustainable. Irregular income. Dividends aren't as stable as a salary and depend on company performance. So you might be asking, how are dividends taxed? Dividends are taxed independently of income tax through the dividend tax system. A tax-free allowance allows a certain amount of dividends to be received without incurring tax. The taxation of dividends varies based on individual income tax plans, so basic rate, higher rate or additional rate. Director's loan. Director's loan refers to funds that a director borrows from their own company or conversely lends to their company. These transactions can occur when a director takes money out of the company for personal use, a director's loan account in credit, or injects personal funds into the company, a director's loan account in debit. Director borrowing. If a director takes money from the company for personal expenses and hasn't formally declared it as salary, dividends or expenses, it is considered a director's loan. This creates a debit balance in the director's loan account. Director lending. Credit director's loan account. If a director lends personal funds to the company, this creates a credit balance in the director's loan account. In this case, the director effectively provides a loan to the company. But what are the pros and cons? Well, the pros of a director's loan account is the flexibility. A director's loan account provides flexibility to withdraw money from the company, which can be helpful for personal expenses. There's no tax on withdrawals. Generally, there's no tax on withdrawing a director's loan, making it a tax efficient option. The cons, repayment requirements. Directors' loans must be repaid to the company and there are rules to follow to avoid tax implications. Complexities. Managing directors' loans require careful bookkeeping and adherence to legal regulations, such as documenting directors' loan in writing and specifying terms such as interest rates, repayment schedules and any security provided. So let's talk about the tax implications. If the director's loan account remains overdrawn in the debit balance at the end of the company's accounting period, there can be tax consequences. The company may have to pay tax on the outstanding loan. This is also known as a section 455 tax. So if you hear S455 from an accountant, you know what it is. Suppose a director's loan is interest free or has a low interest rate. In that case, it may be considered a benefit in kind and the director could be liable for tax on it. And let's not forget about reimbursing expenses. Learn how to use this method to keep more money in your pocket. Reimbursement of expenses involves the company repaying you for legitimate business expenses you have personally incurred. The company can reimburse business related expenses such as travel, accommodation, meals and other necessary costs. Properly documented business expenses reimbursed by the company are typically tax free for the director. Check out our video 10 plus things you can claim for your business as tax deductible to get the lowdown on tax deductible business expenses. Pros and cons. Pros. It's tax free. Properly documented business expenses reimbursed by the company are typically tax free for the director. Financial efficiency. Reimbursing business expenses directly can be more financially efficient than paying personally and claiming them later. And the cons. Documentation challenges. Strict documentation is required to ensure expenses qualify for reimbursement. It is not a form of income. While it helps cover business related costs, reimbursement doesn't contribute to personal income. Guidance for effective expense reimbursement. Keep meticulous records of all business related expenses, including receipts and invoices. This documentation is vital for demonstrating the legitimacy of the business expenses. Establish a clear expense policy within your company, outlining what expenses are eligible for reimbursement. This helps to maintain consistency and transparency. Regularly review your business related expenses to identify opportunities for reimbursement. Ensure that you are taking advantage of this method to optimise your personal income. 
Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. If you have any questions or want more videos like this, let us know in the comments below or book a free consultation call with me today. Until next time, keep crunching those numbers and building your business dreams. Take care. Bye.